Dr. Phil's exclusive interview. The divorce has been nasty from the very beginning. According to the legal filings and the divorce paperwork obtained by the Pasadena Star News, both parents fought for sole custody, citing fears that the other parent would flee with the child to another country. The light shed on the divorce documents reveals a bitter custody battle filled with accusations of potential parental abductions, harassment, allegations of molestation, and a request for a domestic violence restraining order by Aramaz Andresian Jr.'s mother, Ana Estevez. When you walked out of that courtroom that day, did you have any sense that that judge had just put Peaky in harm's way? Absolutely, absolutely. We had the video ready for him to watch. He said it was hearsay. I left there brokenhearted because I knew that this was a battle that, I, that there's no way that I would win. No matter what I tried to do, this judge would not listen. DCFS would not listen. I told DCFS when my son was interviewed about the kicking and the pinching that he was afraid of his father. You know, I, I spent a lot of my professional career as a litigation consultant. Everything that happens has a start. It has a first link in a chain. And I always said, but for this happening, this couldn't happen. And but for this happening, this couldn't happen. But for that judge denying to protect you and your son, was that the first link in this chain? I believe so, yes. Failing to protect. Yes. The day that Peaky went to Disneyland, did you know he was going to Disneyland? No, no, I did not. By court order, we were supposed to Skype. And when that didn't happen, I reached out to Ara multiple times with no response. What was your level of anxiety at that point? Was it just he's being a jerk or was this at a level of alarm? I think it was a combination of both. For me to violate a court order knowingly, I would be terrified. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. I would be on the phone from six to seven doing that Skype call, but he didn't. Did he pick him up at the house from you? Were you at your parents' house when he came by and picked him up or did you deliver him somewhere? He had my son for the entire week. How many days before Disneyland had it been since you had seen Peaky? I saw him the Saturday before. I believe it was April 15th. That was the last time I saw my son. And you had talked to him on Skype since then? That very first Tuesday was the first time we Skyped. How long did you talk? About 20 minutes. Do you remember the last thing you said to Peaky? I told him that I loved him more than anything and that he was my world. And I couldn't wait to see him on Saturday. What did he say to you? He says, I love you too, Mama. I'll see you on Saturday. As much as you were concerned, did you in your wildest dreams ever think that would be the last time you would ever see him? No. I was so paranoid regarding the things that Aro would come up with. So every exchange, I would videotape it. I would mount my cell phone on my rear view mirror of my car and videotape it because he would just lie about everything. And so I videotaped the last time we exchanged and I did not know that was the last time I would see him. And you were supposed to see him when then? On Saturday, you were supposed to get him back. At what time? 9 a.m. When did it hit you that this was not just a manipulation, that something was really wrong this time? I gave him a grace period. I gave our a grace period of five minutes because my son's appointment was at 9 o'clock. And at 9.05, I texted him. I didn't get a response. I texted him multiple times with no response. I called his cell, left him a number of voice messages. 
with no response. After about 20 minutes, I contacted my attorney and told my attorney that Ara failed to show up with my son. So he immediately emailed Ara's attorney with no response and I called my attorney back at about 9.40 and said he's still not here. He said, and that's when he told me to call the police. When did it hit you that something was seriously wrong? Coming up. My son's disappearance is my worst nightmare. Every day I was out to search for him, to talk to people. What was he doing while you were doing all this? Absolutely nothing. He went to Las Vegas and during that time he stayed at a hotel, went to a number of concerts, went skydiving, was caught on video with prostitutes. When did the police arrest him for a second time? What was the reason? Suspicion of murder. How did that make you feel? My heart just broke into a million pieces. Dr. Phil's exclusive interview continues. Little Armaz was supposed to be left off with his mother at 9 o'clock Saturday morning, April 22nd. The boy's father told detectives that's what he was going to do. But first, he said, his son wanted to play at the park in South Pasadena. And that's where Andresian Sr. was found by a passerby, passed out near his car at 6.30 in the morning. His son, nowhere in sight. When did it hit you that something was seriously wrong? So San Marino Police Department responded. They ran Ara's name. They told me that Ara was picked up in a park that morning between 6 and 6.30. He was semi-unconscious, and he was taken in as a 5150 because he was incoherent. And when I told them about my son, they said there was no sign of my son in the vehicle. So they had picked him up three hours before he was to drop Peaky off to you, and he wasn't with him? No. What did you think in that moment? I was terrified. I didn't know what to think. I thought, okay, maybe he, maybe he abducted my son and he's trying to come up with this scenario that people will believe. So I immediately called Ara's mother and I was crying and I shared with her that Ara was found in a park and was taken to the hospital. And I told her, I said, my son is missing. Have you seen him? Do you know where he's at? And she kept going back to Ara. Is Ara okay? What's wrong with Ara? And finally I lost it and I said, did you hear what I'm saying? My son is missing. Have you seen him? Do you know where he's at? And she says, no, I haven't seen him. What was the next material thing you learned? That he wasn't held very long on a psychiatric hold, um, that he was arrested for child endangerment. Why? Because he had taken some prescription drugs that were not his and he couldn't recall where my son was. He claimed he knew absolutely nothing about what happened and the whereabouts of my son. What, what did you think at that point? <laughs> How could he not know? How could he not know where my son is? How could he take prescription pills in the presence of my son? He gave this statement through his attorney. He said, I was at the park with my son and then I found myself waking up in Huntington Memorial Hospital hours later. I can only speculate that I must have been attacked in the park given my unresponsive state and subsequent physical condition. My family and I are heartbroken that Aramaz Jr. is missing and may be in harm's way. Is that written by him? Or is that an attorney statement? I'm assuming it was his attorney that wrote that. You didn't believe it? No. The minute you heard it? No. You pleaded for those that might be concealing your son to come forward. Yes. You thought maybe he had done something with him, hidden him somewhere, done something. Were you hopeful that he was alive and kidnapped or were you admitting to consciousness that something had happened worse. In my heart, I always believed that my son was alive and that Ara had abducted him 
and was hiding him to get back at me. Never once did I think that a parent would kill their child. When he was released, did you talk to him? No. Never spoke to him? I had no him. communication with him. Your son was missing for 72 days. What was that like for you? Absolute devastation. My son's disappearance became a full-time job. Every day I was out doing something to spread information, to search for him, to talk to people. What was he doing while you were doing all this? Absolutely nothing. Did he go to Vegas, I understand? He went to Las Vegas a number of times, I understand. His last stay in Vegas, he was there for 47 days. And during that time, he event, he went skydiving, he was caught on video with prostitutes. He, he changed his appearance, right? He changed his appearance. Hair, beard, everything. When did the police arrest him for a second time? I believe it was June 23rd in Las Vegas. What was the reason they arrested him the second time? Suspicion of murder. How did that make you feel? My heart just broke into a million pieces. Is that how you found out that your son was dead? Coming up. When I saw him on television in Las Vegas when he was joking with a judge, I thought it was one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen. Closed captioning provided by we now return to Dr. Phil's exclusive interview. Authorities say Armaz Dadresian killed his five-year-old little boy because he wanted to get back at his estranged wife. He showed no remorse at his first court hearing in Vegas and even laughed and joked about being extradited back to California. If California wants me to come What was the reason they arrested him the second time? Suspicion of murder. Is that how you found out that your son was dead? No, at that time they did not locate his body. They did not know where his body was. But they arrested him for murder anyway. It was a murder no body charge. When I saw him on television in Las Vegas when he was joking with a judge, I thought it was one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen. I could not wrap my head around how someone who claimed that they did not know the whereabouts of my child and they were concerned about my child's safety would behave in the manner that he did. When and where did they find your son's body? They found my son on June 30th, about a mile away from Lake Kachuma where they had conducted a number of searches. Um, it was at a Vista Point and what I was told is that it was a heavily wooded area and Ara took my son and propped him up against a tree. He took off a gold necklace that I had given to him the day before we got married and he put it around my son and he left him there lifeless. Did they tell you how he took his life? The day of his sentencing, on August 23rd, they pulled me into another room and told me that Ara had suffocated my son because that information was included in the probation report that was going to be shared during his sentencing. And they wanted me to know ahead of time. My son was asleep when Ara began to suffocate him with his own sweatshirt. And I asked the detective, did my son wake up while he was being suffocated? And he said, yes. He said that it took Ara about four minutes to murder my son. They also said that Ara had been planning this for three or four months. How did they know that? When they confiscated his computer, 
They found Google searches of heavily wooded areas by Lake Kachuma and by Solvang, dating back three to four months. They also know that it was premeditated because he was caught on video a couple days before the Disneyland trip, putting items in his car. So at his residence, my son stayed with his grandmother Tuesday night and Wednesday night before they went to Disneyland. And it was during that time when Ara put the gas can in his trunk and put a large duffel bag, which was not recovered, in the trunk of his vehicle. Do you think he planned to kill himself? Coming up. His casket was custom made and the coroner told me he was 38 inches. He was 41 and a half inches. He explained to me how decomposed my son was. Closed captioning provided by Dr. Phil's exclusive interview continues. Do you think he planned to kill himself? That's what the detectives believe. I think Ara is too much of a narcissist to do that. If he truly meant to take his own life, I doubt that he would choose to burn himself alive. Yeah, it doesn't seem to fit with his persona. No. Did you get to see Peaky one final time after they found him? No. No, that... When they found my son, that was another battle that I faced. I had to work directly with the coroner's office because they had to confirm his identity. When they found him, he was completely decomposed. He was skeletal. His casket was custom made. I said, wait a minute. He had his physical exam on February 28th. He was 41 and a half inches. So he explained to me how decomposed my son was. I'm sorry that you had to know that and that you had to hear that. Tell me what we have here. This is my son. I carry his urn with me when I travel or go to different places because what my son and I used to talk all the time. We had really good conversations. You could tell he was an old soul. And so he would ask me, Mama, can we go here someday? And he loved Pennsylvania. And he would ask me, can we go and visit Uncle Ronnie, Mama? So I made a promise to myself that when I would go places, he would be with me along my journey. If you could say something to him right now, what would it be? Coming up. In the back of my mind, I just, I still think of what else could I have done? What did I do wrong? You feel like you let him down? We now return to Dr. Phil's exclusive interview. If you could say something to him right now, what would it be? It would be the same thing that I told him on the day of his sentencing. Which was? That I pity him. That he's a failure as a man, he's a failure as a father, and he's a failure as a human being. I hope you relive the image of you murdering my baby every day for the rest of your insignificant life. When you die, may your dark soul burn in the eternal flames of hell. For I have no doubt that justice will be served on you both in this life and the next. What's your grieving process been like? As much as I want to tell myself that it's not my fault, I still deal with the what if. I did everything that I could possibly do to protect my child, but in the back of my mind, I just, I still think of what else could I have done? What did I do wrong? Why didn't the courts believe a word that I said or, or even evaluate the evidence that I provided? That's a big thing that I'm dealing with now is I have apologized to my son so many times for failing him. You feel like you let him down? I do. I do. Has this been hard every day? Has there been 
times that you find some peace and feel a connection to Peaky? You know, every day is different. I have some good days and some not so good days. I started grief therapy. One thing I started doing at the request of my therapist is grief journaling, which I find very, very difficult to do. It's tough, but I'm glad that they've asked you to do it because it, as difficult as it is, it can be helpful. You're approaching congressmen now. What are you asking them to do and how can I help? So there's a resolution that Congress has presented. It's Resolution 72. And the congressman from Pennsylvania, Congressman Meehan, is the lead on that. Okay. And so my trip to Pennsylvania had multiple purposes besides the family reunion. I wanted to make sure that I met with the congressman. So at this point, there are 10 co-sponsors. And the legislative director told me that we would need about 100 for it to be on the floor. So tell me what this resolution says and does. So basically the resolution is designed to protect children in divorce and custody. I don't want this to happen to any other child and I definitely don't want another mother to feel what I feel. Coming up. It was the love of my life. It will always be the love of my life. Well, I've been invited many times to testify before Congress to advise them on different issues, and I have many friends in the United States Congress, and with your permission, I'm going to write to each one of them and ask them to enlist their colleagues in joining on Bill 72 and see if we can get a hundred people behind this and get it moving. You're starting a foundation in your son's name, correct? Yes. Tell me about that. It's called Peaky's Justice and it's multifaceted. We want to focus on providing family services. It's also a memorial scholarship in my son's name. Well, let me say this to those of you at home. I, I want to invite every one of my viewers uh, to make a donation uh, to Peaky's Justice. And what I'm going to do is on when Georgia smiled, the Robin McGraw Revelation Foundation, we're going to put up a portion of that foundation uh, labeled Peaky's Justice so you can earmark your donations to when Georgia smiled for Peaky's Justice. This is an important foundation for a beautiful, beautiful child that met a tragic end. Because of you and Peaky, a lot of lives are gonna be impacted. That is my hope. Armaz Andresian Sr. was sentenced to 25 years to life in prison. Our thoughts and prayers are with this mother. We leave you with memories of her beautiful son. May he rest in peace. Thanks for watching. He was an incredible child. I need a sign to let me know you're here. He loved learning. All of these lines are being crossed over the atmosphere. He loved to experience new things. I so much potential. He had such a beautiful heart. And he was wise beyond his years. He was the love of my life. And he will always be the love of my life.